In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install cement board on shower walls for tile. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. When it comes to cement board selection, we have two different thicknesses I'd like to tell you about. We got two different boards here. They both look identical other than this one's half inch thickness and this one's quarter inch thickness. So as you can see, this one's relatively stiff and this one is relatively flimsy. There's not much to it. And the key differences is the thickness helps give it more structural ability to be stuck on a wall compared to this one, which is thin. This one's meant to be placed on a floor that has a strong substrate, such as three quarter inch subfloor. And there's several different brands. There's Permabase, there's Hardy Backer, there's Dura Rock, which that's what these are. So I just want to tell you they're all about the same. So it all depends on what you want to use. And also we're going to be using Dura Rock and Permabase for this installation. Most manufacturers of cement board make the sheets five foot by three foot. And there is reasons, and I'll explain that in a moment, and I always protect the shower pan with cardboard and plywood, or any type of sheathing for that matter. Because the standard width of tubs and showers is five foot, that's why the cement board is pre-made to be five foot. So all we gotta do is start on this back wall and we won't have to cut it down in order for it to fit. And also, I stopped the drywall three foot, one half inch, so that way we won't have to rip down the cement board in order to install it on the side walls. So always be sure to start your cement board on your back wall if you're installing a standard tub or shower. In order to begin the installation of the cement board, I'm gonna start from the ceiling and work down. And also what I need to do first is find the first stud here. So we got about seven and a quarter. And then after that, we know we're 16 on center. So I can just continue that 16 on center layout and transcribe it to the cement board. I'm gonna use a framing square or a T-square. Either one will work fine here. And just gonna measure over from the edge to the center of that first stud and lay, make my layout going across here. And just a little tip, all the red marks on a tape measure are the 16 on center layout, just FYI. Now I'm gonna take my square and just make a square line down the board off each one of those marks. So I'm more or less just marking the stud center onto the cement board. I'm now gonna use what's called cement board screws that are an inch and five eighths, which are designed to install half inch cement board. And the product link can be found in the description below if you wanna check them out. I'm now just gonna grab a handful and pre-start two on each line where it's gonna be hitting a stud. And now's a good time to remove any of the stickers that are on the boards because these will interfere with the waterproofing that we got to install in the next video. Because I work alone, I'm gonna use the assistance of two framing nails for this next step. So what I'm gonna do is measure down three foot, one quarter inch and place a framing nail and only put it in about a quarter of the way into the stud. I'm gonna place one there and now I'm gonna come over on this side and do the same thing. I'm now gonna use a product that's called Liquid Nails and any good wallboard adhesive will work here fine. I'm just gonna run a bead of it down each one of these studs starting from the ceiling down to the height of that nail and you can be shy of that nail an inch or so and it'll be fine. I'm now gonna take the cement board and lay it on top of the framing nails in order to hold it so I can screw it to the wall. All right, now the framing nails are holding it. Now I'm just gonna push it up tight against the wall and screw it to the wall using the star drive that came with the screws. I'm now gonna use my step ladder to get up here and screw the cement board off every five to six inches with a screw. And also be sure to countersink the screw just to where it's flush beneath the surface of the cement board. I do recommend using an impact driver because a drill can strip out the screws. I'm now gonna remove the framing nails that I used to hold the cement board while I was installing it. And also on these edges, these are what's called beveled edges. So when we go to finish this joint later, there's a little bevel to it. So the taping ends up making everything flush. But I also wanted to show you that I put screws in that beveled edge because that way they'll be hidden. 
When it comes to installing the cement board on the sidewalls, you do it the exact same way except the full piece will fit in vertically. I'm now down far enough to where I gotta cut around the shower pan. So I did a video, you can check out in the top right hand corner of the screen, of where I did this and where I notched out the back of the cement board to go over the shower pan so that way this lip was recessed back into the cement board. So I'm gonna show you another way you can do it. So this involves cutting a piece of cement board that comes down on top of this nailing flange. So we're gonna measure up to that cement board and it looks like we got 32 inches. So I'm gonna rip a piece down to finish up this run. I'm gonna show you an easy way to mark this to rip it down. So measure down to your measurement that you needed and this was 32 inches. And if we take a measurement, it's about four inches up from this bottom. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and hold it on the end of my tape measure. And then I'm gonna hold about four inches on this side and then we're gonna place it on that mark and then we're gonna just scribe right down using the edge of the cement board as a guide. So now it's marked and we just gotta cut right down that line. I'm gonna show you three different methods in cutting cement board. One is using a scoring knife, the other is using an oscillating tool with a diamond blade on it, and the other one is using a circular saw with a diamond blade on it. So I'm gonna first rip this off here using the circular saw with the diamond blade. I'm gonna tell you which one I think is best after I show you. First method I'm gonna show you how to do is the diamond blade on the circular saw, and always make sure you wear ear protection and eye protection when cutting cement board and you more or less are just going to rip it down as if you're ripping a piece of OSB or sheathing. This next method is using this scoring tool and to use it all you got to do is hold a straight edge on whatever you're going to cut and then you'll just scribe or score right down the side of it like so and this is my least favorite method because as you can see it's very difficult to score through this cement board and especially where these beveled edges are it's very difficult because there's fiber wrapped around the edge but i'm going to show you how to use it anyways so this is definitely the cheapest option but it's not nearly as good so you score it then you just snap it and then you take a utility knife and then you just cut down the back so not a really bad option but definitely not nearly as easy as that circular saw and the next option is using the diamond blade that's on the oscillating tool and this is kind of the same idea but instead of using the straight edge as a guide we're just going to mark it just like we did with the circular saw like so and then we're just going to cut right down it like this And as you can see, it cut it really easy and then snap it just like we did using the scoring knife. And then we just cut the back at just as if we were cutting drywall. So those are the three methods to use. And my favorite one out of all these is this option. And the reason why I like it is because you can cut this indoors without throwing up too much dust. And also, this one was very difficult as you've seen. Now the circular saw worked great, except it throws up a lot of dust and you cannot cut it inside throwing up that much dust. You must come outside to cut it with a circular saw. So this one is my favorite option. In order to drill up for the shower head, I got an inch and a quarter drill bit. And I also have a scrap piece of cement board under this so I don't drill into the subfloor. Simple as that. I'm now gonna cut out for the shower valve and in order to do so, I'm gonna use my oscillating tool with the diamond blade on it. And I'm just gonna follow the marks that I made to cut it out. The next product we're gonna need is what's called fiber mesh tape. And this comes in a spool and we're gonna go through and tape every joint using this product. Where the two pieces of cement board meet, you're gonna have the beveled edges and this is where the fiber mesh tape is going to go. Now this side is sticky and this side is not. So we're just going to take the sticky side and place right over the center of that joint like so. And we're going to take it and spread it across the whole joint and press it into that joint as we go. And we're going to run it until we get to the other wall. And now once we get back into this corner, we're just going to get roughly the length we need and just cut it using a utility knife and then just press it 
tight and that's all there is to placing the fiber mesh on a joint. Now when it comes to the joints to where both pieces meet and there's no bevel where we ran it vertically, you do the exact same thing. You just tape right over that joint as if there was a bevel. It's just that when we go to put thin set mortar over it, we're gonna put it on a little thinner because there's not much of a bed to place the thin set on. We also need to tape around the shower valve in order to do so. Again, same idea other than we're just gonna place the tape right up to that plastic piece of the shower valve. Right here where the shower head's gonna be coming out and there's the drop ear, I'm gonna go ahead and place a little bit of tape around that. It's probably a little bit on the overkill side because not much moisture is gonna be around there anyways. But for the sake of completion, I'm gonna go ahead and just tape around it so it fills in correctly. And up here was cut really tight so we don't have to put any up there. In these corners, same idea. Try to center it up with the joint and then just pack it back into there nice and square. And it helps too if you have a putty knife to get it in there really tight. The last place I'd like to show you where I'm going to tape is right here where the drywall meets the cement board. And I'm just going to lap over it just a little bit with the fiber mesh tape because my bull nose is actually going to stop right about there. So I don't want to go too far past the drywall, so something like that. Now it's time to mix up the thin set for the joints. And in order to do so, you're going to need clean water, a half inch drill with a mixing blade, a bucket, and your thin set. You can use gray thin set, white thin set, any brand, it doesn't really matter for this taping job. And this one is for porcelain tile and it can be for ceramic tile, it really doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do now is just pour just how much we think we're gonna need for the tape job into the bucket. I'm now going to add water and mix it up. And I wanna keep adding water and mixing until I get a peanut butter-like consistency. After you get this to a peanut butter-like consistency, you wanna mix it up for three minutes and then let it set for five. After it's done setting for five minutes, we're gonna remix it up one more time for about a minute. I'm now gonna use a mud pan that's typically used for drywall and a six inch putty knife. And I'm just gonna scoop up the thin set and place it into the pan. In order to mud these joints with the thin set, all you gotta do is just smear some on. It doesn't have to be pretty. And we're just gonna try to finish to level out from one board to another, wherever you got the beveled joints. So something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy. This is gonna be under the tile. But you do want it flat. And now when you get to these corners, same way, we're just gonna put it on one side and then put some on the other side. And then just kind of smooth it out as best you can. Just something like that and then you just go down the whole corner like that and hit all the flats just like I just showed you. Anybody that finishes drywall for a living would be great at this part of the job. Anywhere you place screws in the cement board, just be sure to give them a quick cover. Now it's time to address where the shower pan meets the cement board. And if you remember correctly, we stopped the cement board right on top of the shower pan. So we got to cover up this flange. And unlike the way I did it in the other video, the other video, the cement board went over it so I wouldn't have to do this step. But in this one, I'm gonna show you a different way. And it all is gonna start by taking the thin set and we're just gonna start filling in that gap. So I'm just going to take the mortar or the thin set then ju and just start packing it back over that flange. I'm now gonna take the fiber mesh tape and place it over where the joint and the thin set line up. After I have it placed there, I'm just gonna kinda embed it into the pre-existing mortar I have there. And now I'm gonna go through with just a little bit more mortar and fill in over that. And then I'm just gonna smooth it out flush with the cement board. Just to give you a closer look on how I finished that up, 
as you can see, it's similar to how you would finish drywall up around a tub or shower, other than it's cement board for tile. If you want to learn how I'm going to waterproof this shower, check out this video. It'll help you out.